Well, hello. Uh, my name is Clifford Cho. I'm a uh, hepatopancreatic biliary surgical oncologist at the University of Wisconsin. And uh, I've been asked to give my thoughts on a paper that was presented at the third plenary session of the SSAT today. Uh, this is a paper entitled Surgical Resection versus Local Ablation for Hepatocellular Can uh, Carcinoma on Cirrhosis. Uh, results from a propensity matched study. And this is a terrific paper that was presented by Dr. Andrea Ruzanenti and co-authors from the University of Verona Medical School in Verona, Italy. Um, as most of you might be already aware, this is a very nice contribution to an ongoing debate that's fairly hot these days in the management of hepatocellular carcinoma. And that is, what are the respective roles of resection uh, versus ablation? Um, I think it goes without saying that surgical resection is still the sort of most time-tested gold standard for treatment for patients with reasonably well-compensated cirrhosis and resectable tumors. Uh, but over the past two decades or so, there has been increasing experience with the use of ablation technologies, you know, percutaneous ethanol injection, radiofrequency ablation, more recently microwave ablation. To a point where I think reasonable people are asking the question, are resection and ablation oncologically equivalent at this point? And this is the tough question that uh, Ruzanetti and colleagues are addressing. Uh, as they acknowledge, this is also a question that's been asked in a couple of recent randomized controlled trials, but perhaps because of limitations in sample size or, or methodological variations, there really hasn't been a consistent message from these trials. So what these folks did was they drew on their very large experience of almost 500 patients with cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma and did a very careful propensity score case matching analysis to compare 88 patients who underwent resection versus 88 almost identical patients who underwent ablation. And really what they found were, were two things. First, uh, what they observed were that for patients with small tumors, the outcomes were really pretty identical. And, and that, I think, uh, uh, is a contribution to our growing understanding that for patients with small hepatocellular carcinomas, it almost doesn't matter what you do, the outcomes are, are really pretty good either way. Uh, the controversy comes in in their findings that uh, there was a notable oncological advantage in, in, in patients who underwent resection if they had larger tumors. Now, if you think about it, um, as these authors did, uh, Fundamentally speaking, uh, there's really only one difference between surgical resection and ablation. They both have in common the fact that they will leave behind most of the liver, which is tumorigenic. And, and in fact, that's borne out by their observation that the likelihood of distant recurrences was equivalent between the two treatment groups. Uh, the difference really, if you think about it, gets down to how well they do at local tumor control. And that's in fact where they saw the difference. The uh, likelihood of local recurrence was very small in the group of patients that underwent resection, uh, whereas about a quarter of patients who underwent ablation experienced as some component of their resection locally recurrent disease. Now here's the part that gets a little bit interesting. Um, it turns out that about half of those patients who do develop local recurrent disease were actually what you might call treatment failures. So th this is a cohort of patients in whom they were unable to fully ablate the entire tumor with their ablation technology. And I think the tough question that, that arises when you review this, this paper, this talk, is what would happen if you excluded this cohort of patients, this cohort of treatment failures, from the analysis? If you think about it, it was much more, much more difficult to fully ablate a larger tumor than a smaller tumor. And so if you excluded these treatment failures, might there have been a greater equivalence between the two? A little bit difficult to answer that question based on the data that they presented, but I think that in summary, uh, this is a paper that really gets us a little bit closer to our understanding that perhaps the difference between resection and ablation isn't so much a biological phenomenon as much as it is a technological phenomenon. And perhaps with further improvements in ablation technology, perhaps with microwave ablation, maybe we may get to a point where these two competing forms of oncological therapy may actually prove to be oncologically equivalent. And I think this paper takes us one step closer toward that understanding. Thanks very much.